Hi, I am back with part two of this video, just showing you where I left off. So, um, there will definitely be multiple parts to this series because there are more buttons than I imagined, which is great for me. I'm happy about that. Um, and good for you guys. I can share even more. So let's just continue. So out of the tin that had the M on it, continuing with that, there is this really cute button. It's actually a, it's brass. This part in the center is brass, so it's metal. But it's surrounded by this gingham. Actually, no, it isn't. It's just like this weird spotted green material. And on the back, it looks like this. But I can actually feel that there's like a hole that I could actually stick my needle through um, to thread this. But it's never been threaded. There's no hole. So that's pretty neat. I actually like that button a lot. And what else do we have? I'm just going to try to pick out like the mo more interesting ones that I see. This is pretty interesting. There's a few of these. Um, they're like um, a metal outside. I almost want to call them brass again, but I'm not sure what that is. And then here, this is Bakelite. And then pressed inside the two holes, there's the same metal. So these have like an applied um, center for the holes. And Bakelite is what you see here as far as the plastic on the outside. And this is what the back looks like. So those, once again, lots of cool buttons here to use for projects. And then there's some like hard Actually, this is another Bakelite button, a Bakelite um, plastic red button, because that's what Bakelite is. It's, just, it's a form of plastic. There's a couple of those. There's a weird one. This, I don't know what it's made out of. It, because it's like, there's this white underneath, and then it's painted red over it. And this is what the shank looks back on the back looks like on the back it's like an applied shank and this particular shank would be called a curved slab shank because of the curve so once again some interesting buttons this one's actually made out of like a tin you know I don't know there and then there's a lot of them in here that have fabric over them so just try to get these out of the way my little doggie's like, Mama, I fell down. It's okay, Maya. So put those away. And the next letter, C. I am picking these up in no particular order. Once again, I am seeing the insides as you do. So I'm also looking at the tins to see like what sort of condition they're in because I'm so excited about these. So, interesting, there's some, um, I'm trying to figure out what this is. Oh, it's an eagle. So, I don't think these are actual military buttons, because the eagle wouldn't, it's kind of crude in design. If these were actual uniform military buttons, they should be, I don't know, made better, but let's see what's on the back. I'm going to... I was going to say I'm going to rip it off the card, but look at how it's... A... <laughs> so these are definitely not, you know, brand new buttons because they look at how they're put on the back. And it does say something about Belding Hemingway ink. I don't know where that is, but these were made in New Jersey. I can tell because I can see the New Jersey up here and there's a zip code. Um, but there's no patent information, so these are not patent buttons, which is P-A-T-E-N. 
Um, so I think these were just made for a coat or a jacket, you know, maybe something for boating, but not anything to do with the uniform. But these are pretty nice. They're very sturdy. They're in really good condition for the age. Actually, what I'll do... Oops, sorry about that. I am so sucking at making this video. Please forgive me for that. It is 2.18 in the morning, and I am bound and determined to make these videos, so oh, I probably should have some coffee or tea. You know, I don't really drink coffee. So these have fleur de lis on them, which is simply a French term for a design that they had. There's no patent information on the back of these either. They're plain on the back. They have a squared out shank. One of them is silver, which is really weird. And the rest of them are like a golden color, but they're all metal. Remind me of bells, but they're not bells. And this is just a blue button. This one is, these are interesting. There's a couple of these that have, once again, the whole metal combination. But this is a combination of metal and glass. It's a dark blue glass. You can see those, and then you can see the shank in the back. This is a classic. Actually, no, it's not. It's not a classic shank shape. You could tell because it is a hourglass slab shank because it's shaped like an hourglass, like an hourglass figure. And I would these probably look to me to be about like 1960. Maybe, yeah, they, these have to be 1960. They completely remind me of what I've seen on clothing from the 60s. And then inside, there are some other miscellaneous pieces and parts. Um, this, these would actually go around a button. So what would happen is you have this decorative piece that would be sewn onto your clothing so these would be sewn on. I hopefully they're showing up okay on camera. So these would be sewn on. And let's see if we have a button that. And then they would go around the button like this. So that's how and obviously wouldn't be this button. It would be something that was plain, probably a plain black button or even a rhinestone button would be used for something. Even the thread where this was attached to the clothing is still there. So I just pulled it off. But that's an old way of attaching buttons to clothing. I don't, I mean, do you even see that anymore? I don't think so. And in this, there seems to be, it, I want to say it seems as if they had a method to their madness for dividing out some of the buttons, but not all of them, because several of these are blue, but then there's other colors. Ooh, look at this blue mother of pearl. There are several of these. These are mother of pearl buttons. And I think that was the natural color, because... It's not a solid block of blue. So that's pretty cool. And there is one charm string button in here. Actually, there's two. They match. So that's C. C is done. Now, let's see what's next. Oh, I want to thank more people. So I also want to thank Amy's Venture SCG for watching our videos and commenting. And so now this is video number two. So this is part two of this continuing series of brand new videos I'm making on buttons because I have this huge haul here to show you guys. I want to share with you. But something else I want to share is how you can win a bunch of buttons from me. I'm not going to say they will be the best buttons in the world, every single one of them, but there will be some great 
buttons inside what you win. All you have to do is comment and give us a thumbs up on the videos. If you've already watched our videos, um, you will get credit for that and be entered. If and what and what I'll do is contact you through your YouTube account to let you know that you've won. Um, the more times you comment, the more times you will be entered. So there's currently seven videos out there right now. Plus, I am going to be creating three or four new videos for this particular series. And I have some news coming up on two very special videos I will be doing. Um, two of the videos will be this, un, you know, me revealing my haul that I have. Um, also, the other two, like I said, I'll tell you about those in my next video. But if you watch every video, that will be like 11, 12 entries. Um, and like I said, just comment and give us a thumbs up. And if you share the videos, extra bonus. You will get four extra entries. So, and I, and my husband and I were talking about this. If we have enough participation, we will actually do two or three drawings, not just one. So you pay nothing for shipping, nothing for handling, nothing for the buttons. It's our way of saying thank you for supporting us. So continuing on. So this is G. Figure that out. Pull these out. This one is fuller. Ooh, it has little beads falling all over the place as well. Ooh, you know I had to pick this one up because it's, <laughs> I saw the back. When I saw the back, I was like, let's see what that is. So this one is made with little seed pearls and a larger pearl in the middle. These are not real pearls. They're faux or fake. Um, but wow, someone went to a lot of work. Um, to create this because each one sits in its own little cradle. They are glued in so they're not clawed in the way I like them, but pretty cool. Nice button. Great. Once again, that's a great part, you know, thing that you can use for jewelry making. There's some of these mother of pearl buttons with a star in the center. There's several of those. Ooh, another iridescent button. Remember from the first um, M container, we had one of those. I am so happy there's more of them because that's really pretty and I have some ideas for those. Whoa, what is this? A belt buckle. Wow, cool. You never know what you're going to find in buttons. You just don't. So here is a lion head belt buckle that was in this lot of buttons. Makes sense, you know, you're sewing, you throw your stuff in there, and all of the little shanks are there so that this can actually be used. It hooks to attach. That is really neat. Put that to the side. There's some more of the iridescent buttons in here, 